out front now, David Gergen, who advised four presidents, including Nixon and Clinton, Ben Ginsburg, a Republican election lawyer for four decades and former national counsel to the Bush-Cheney campaigns in 2000 and 2004, and longtime Republican donor uh, Dan Eberhardt. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on this Friday uh, post-Thanksgiving. We really appreciate it. And Ben, let's start with you. Let, let's just d d dive right in to the Trump campaign losing yet another legal challenge to overturn the election results in Pennsylvania. A federal appeals court saying bluntly the campaign's claims have no merit. But Trump campaign lawyer Jenna Ellis now says on to SCOTUS, as you see in this tweet right here, is there any chance, Ben, the Supreme Court could side with Team Trump here, or is this simply prolonging the inevitable? It would be hard to imagine that they could. You've got Trump appointee writing the opinion in the Third Circuit. You had a conservative Republican judge writing the district court opinion. Neither of them found anything to do with it. As you know, Pamela, one of the first things they teach in law school is that if you don't have the facts, pound the law. If you don't have the law, pound the facts. If you don't have the facts or the law, pound the table. And we're in the table pounding stage. That's a that's a really good way to put it, table pounding stage. All right, so David, President-elect Biden is refusing to dignify the president's baseless claims of election fraud. As I pointed out earlier, letting his campaign and lawyers do much of the talking. Three weeks later, do you think that that is still the right move? Should he come out and be more outspoken about this? I think that uh, Joe Biden so far, Pamela, uh, has been run a very wise and good campaign. I think he's off to one of the the best starts I've seen in years uh, in the transition, despite the delays. Uh, and I think part of that has been his tone that he has set. He's a calming voice. He's a comforting voice to so many. <clears throat> there are many Americans who were scared, were getting frightened by what was going on. I think he's gotten everybody to sit back and say, thank goodness he's there. He's the adult in the room. So I would not move a right way from that. I, he does probably need a couple of other people, not him, but a couple of other people who can occasionally make a point. Maybe that's going to be Kamala Harris. That's one role a vice president often plays. Uh, but I think there's there's some he could have an outstanding attorney uh, who could argue this. You know, Ben would understand the importance of that. There there are various ways you can do it without get, without him leave, uh, leaving his high perch. Now, if he gets into a brawl with Mitch McConnell uh, and others, and you know, and that could come, we won't know that probably until the Georgia votes. Uh, but if he gets into a brawl and they get really nasty, then he's going to have to head back. Hmm. All right. So, you know, you, you talked about him maybe getting others to speak out. There's also the question about Republicans. I mean, if you really want to get through to Trump supporters who believe the president, Republicans speaking out against it, particularly those who are presidential allies, uh, might have an influence. Uh, president Trump, Dan, is still doing and saying all he can to try to undermine an election that he lost three weeks ago. Look. The numbers are corrupt. We caught them cheating. We caught them stealing. The only way he got 80 million votes is through a massive fraud. This should never take place in this country. We're like a third world country. So he's comparing a U.S. presidential election to an election in a third world country. Millions of people believe what the president is saying. They hear that they believe it. And Republicans are largely silent today. How is this possible? Well, first of all, you know, I, I think that members of the Republican members of the Senate, and Republican members of, of the Congress really need to step step up or step out right now. What we need is leadership from below in the Republican Party. So people that are elected officials, but below the president to really come out and say, look, Mr. President, unfortunately, you lost. Biden won and the country needs to move on. The Republican Party needs to move on. I think that Trump is really uh, creating a stain on his legacy right now. If he wants to be remembered for the Supreme Court. Uh, shift or the tax cuts or one of his other America First policies, he needs to keep quiet and show a little bit of grace right now. Instead, he's doing the opposite and tripling down. And I think it's damaging the Republican brand. Well, but the Republicans, I mean, you're saying it's damaging the Republican brands. Then why aren't they saying more? Why aren't they speaking out more, Dan? I mean, you're a Republican. How because does it make you feel? It. Well, it, it makes me feel frustrated because I think the, the party and the Republicans need to be focused on making Mitch McConnell stronger right now which is winning these two seats in Georgia. And then we need to be focused on winning the next election and taking the House back in 2022. And we can't do that. And Trump has frozen everything. These Republican senators, Republican congressmen, Republican governors, they're afraid of the Trump tweet. And I think we need to get over that uh, as a part of the Republican Party. And we need to figure out how to move forward. 
And Trump is trying to freeze the field to increase his leverage on 2022 and potentially another run in 2024. OK, so Ben, I'm going to get to it in a second, but I want to just get David Gergen's perspective here, given his his longtime experience. You know, he, as Dan just laid out, Republicans are scared. They're worried about the Trump tweet. But overall, when it comes to this country, why, in your view, wh why is this concerning um, for this country? What's happening right now with millions of people believing this president that it was the election was stolen from him? How could that be a threat to to democracy as a whole? It's a very serious threat to democracy. Uh, trust in government, trust in our in national institutions has been declining now for a long time, decades. Uh, it's accelerated under Donald Trump. And what we know from other Western nations, which have been democracies, that have turned to strong men uh, in times of stress. It could happen here in America. And Donald Trump is certainly in, uh, encouraging that outcome. He's had over 400 tweets since the election uh, saying this was fraudulent. He's now got three quarters of Republicans in, in various polls who say that Trump is going to be an illegitimate, fraudulent president. And what that means, uh, Pamela, is that when negotiations start over stimulus or other things, there are a lot of Republicans, I'm sad to say, who are going to fe be feeling a lot of pressure from their base not to negotiate, not to deal with this fraudulent president, to drive him out, to close him down, to see if you can't bring him down. I've never seen a presidency begin on that kind of tone, and I think it's very dangerous. It's certainly going to make it more difficult for uh, for Joe Biden to negotiate successfully, to have a great start to his 100 days. He, the, the man has shown he has a character to be president. He's shown that he has an empathy to be president. Let's not spoil it before he even gets out of the gate. Mm. And, you know, you I, have I, the president... Oh, go ahead, Dan, then I'm going to make sure I get Ben in here, but go ahead quickly. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that this idea of weaponizing the loss to further foment your base, I think, is dangerous to democracy and is really going to create a, a systemic problem if this becomes a pattern in the future. What we really need from President Trump right now is some grace. The longer that Republicans, though, stay silent, it seems like the more this is going to get baked in with the base is what this appears. That's what appears to be happening. And then on top of that, Ben, you have, you know, President Trump yesterday saying that he would leave the White House on January 20th. Let's watch. If the Electoral College does elect President-elect Joe Biden, are you not going to leave this building? Just so you, uh, certainly I will. Certainly I will. And you know that. But as we know, Ben, now he's walking that back, tweeting, Biden can only enter the White House as president if he can prove that his ridiculous 80 million votes were not fraudulently or illegally obtained. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, as you hear the president or, and you see tweets like this, and then you compare that to what's playing out in courts, it seems like his legal battle is actually undercutting any fraud case he's trying to sell to the public. But does that even matter? I mean, it, it, it seems as though his followers are going to listen to him, even though you have judges like like today, appointed by Trump, saying this has no merit. Uh, absolutely right. But what is 100 percent true is that the Constitution says his term ends at noon on January 20th. So he will be gone. And he is mounting up a longer and longer string of losses. We should only hope he takes this case in Pennsylvania up to the Supreme Court, uh, because that will explode the other myth that uh, judges are just going to lay down uh, for him and, and do his bidding because they're Republican judges. So the more the president goes along in this fashion, uh, it, it really is uh, counter counterproductive to what he apparently wants to do. But the process is going to work just like uh, around the country, any number of Republican officials and poll watchers and volunteers did the right thing so that the president's comments now appear all the more uh, ridiculous. And what his followers will see uh, once he is out of office is that there were a lengthy string of losses, losses, losses. And that, in effect, is going to be part of his legacy when we look back at this. And so basically you're saying even if they appeal like this Pennsylvania case to the Supreme Court, um, assuming the Supreme Court does not hand the Trump camp a win, that would only validate uh, Biden's victory as president and invalidate the president's argument. Yes. The, the legitimacy of the Biden victory is even stronger if the president does take this case to the Supreme Court and the mm -hmm. Supreme Court rejects it, which I'm confident they will.
All right. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen. Ben Ginsburg, Dan Eberhardt, David Gergen. Really interesting discussion. Appreciate you coming on and sharing your time with us.